Hello there! Welcome to Zatu Games, I'm Nick and today I'm going to be taking a look at a cheeky little card game that may have escaped your notice. I say that a lot but there is a lot of games out there. This is Sub Astral which is gorgeous but is it good? But is it really good? Really good? Let's find out! Here's a zoomed out view of Sub Astral as the board will be set up. You have six cloud areas and then cards uh, laid out on each, um, each of the cloud areas. If there is ever less than two piles with at least two cards in, then at the end of your turn you will draw more from the deck and you will simply place by the number, like so. Cards uh, have a couple of features. The first is a number a um, biome type and a rarity. Um, so the rarity goes from th one to three, one being rarer, three being more common. On your turn, from your hand, you will place a card onto one of the clouds. And then depending on whether you take cards from the left or from the right of that card, you will do different things. So the first thing you would do is you play it to the number, so if I play this three here, uh, I have to play it to the number three, and then if I take from the left, I add those cards to my hand, plus one. And each of the cards shows you this as well. So I would do that, and then add one to my hand, and then return one to the deck, check that each of the, uh, that there are at least two piles with two or more cards. However, if I play one down like this and take from the right, anything I take is going to go into the tableau in front of me. And what we're trying to do there is score for cards of the same type and uh, mix sets as well. So we lay the cards out and this order is sort of important. Well, it is important really. And then any time we collect more cards, we will move that way, laying them on here. So if next time I collected this, I would do that, for example. But if I didn't have one of these, so if I collected that one as well, that would just go there. Now, the way we score is we score for set collected. And that is going to be, um, you can, there's eight different biomes. So if you collect all eight, you're going to get 36. So if you've got two rows of all eight, you'd get 72 points. What's interesting though, is when you're collecting matching sets, you, you score more points per card the further down it is. So there, if this is pile one, you can't put any cards, new cards can't go there, they must go at the end. So if I put these two cards are worth one point each, these two cards are worth um, two points each, and you only score your two biggest sets. So what you want to do is have your biggest sets further down. So if this was the example here, I've got three cards at the one, two, three, four, five, six position. So that's gonna be 18 points. And then I've got two sets of two and you always score the lower set. So I'll only get another two points. So I'd get uh, 20 points from my um, matching sets. Then I check my sets from the left for mixed ones and uh, I've got six so six will give me 21 and then on the second one although I've got three cards in it they have to go in the order so I've actually only got two there so those two will score me a further three points and that's how Sub Astral works. I'll be honest I didn't know what to expect from Sub Astral it's from Renegade Games who usually put out at least decent games um, but there wasn't any buzz around it. I didn't even notice the two designers are two of designers who I trust that there was so little kind of said about it. Um, but I picked it up on a whim because it was cheap and looked really nice. And my word, what a canny little game this is. I love games where they are simple to explain. You pick a card, you put a card down and you pick some cards up. Where you pick them up from determines where they go. But have these little hooks. 
Now, the hardest thing to explain in Subastral is the scoring system. So you might want to start there if you're teaching it, but it's not as hard as something like Hats, which this game reminds me of lots. And also Hats went under the radar. And I think Hats uh, had more complexity, but that made it harder uh, to teach for the kind of people who like these quick card games. This will play in 10 to 20 minutes, and you'll probably end up playing it again as people go, ah, now I get it. Now I get what I was doing. It's got a real good tension between sometimes the cards you want are in your hand, but to get them on the table, you have to put them onto the public area where they could be taken by someone else. So you've got to cleverly kind of seed that area with uh, multiple cards that you want so that you have uh, various things you can do. You also don't want to run out of cards. You want to have, um, ideally, sixes and ones all the time because that gives you the most flexibility. They're the most valuable in terms of playing to the table because they let you do basically what you want. But you don't want to ignore the other numbers as well, because sometimes what you want is on a six or a one. Uh, so it works really, really well. I think this is a game that honestly should be in every gamer's collection as a kind of first game of the night or a game in between uh, heavier games to keep the mind ticking over. It's not throwaway in the sense that um, something like Uno would be. It's there's depth to it, but it's depth that is approachable and easily digestible. And for that, I think it is a fantastic game. It's certainly staying in my collection. Um, I really love hats, which it reminds me of. Um, but this would be an easy way to get people into the idea of you want that card. You're first going to have to put it onto the table to get that card. And the open information of scoring, you can see everyone else's collection, the order they're doing it in, what they need to make that bigger chain of cards on the same level, uh, just adds that extra level of interaction to it if you want. You can potentially take cards that other people want and work that way. Uh, there is enough for you just to look down at your, at your tableau and go, ah, I can't even think about what they want to do. But if you did want to be nasty, that option is there too. Sub Astral is a fantastic game at a fantastic price that caters for up to five players and plays in 10 to 20 minutes. This, for me, is a surefire winner and I hope more people find out about it. So thank you for watching another Zatu Games video. Do remember to hit like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. We also have accounts on TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and that might be it. It might not. Facebook. Did I say Facebook? Probably. Uh, search for Zatu Games or Zatu Games UK to find all those lovely, lovely accounts. And remember, we have a live show on Facebook on Wednesdays from 8pm. And we are live on Twitch on Monday lunchtimes at 12 and Fridays at, from 9pm, playing a mixture of video games and board games. We'd love to see you there. But for now, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.